talking to us and See? educating us this morning. Thank you very much. Now, five Labor parliamentarians have been travelling through remote communities in Western Australia and the Northern Territory to hear firsthand the issues that are important to them. The trip ends today in the township of Yulara and Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australians, Linda Burney, joins us now. Linda, thanks for your time this morning. You have thanks, been travelling through these remote communities in the Northern Territory. What have you been hearing from communities there? We started in Port Hedland and have finished here at at uh, Yalara at the Mutajulu community. There's been Patrick Dodson, uh, Warren Snowden, Murray Watt, Sharon Clayton, myself, many up with Mal and Deary McCarthy here at Uluru. Uh, we've heard many things. We've heard particularly about the issues for young people, youth suicide. We've heard of the lack of clean water, which makes dialysis very difficult. That's been a constant theme that we've heard, the capacity for people not to have to leave their communities to get dialysis. We've heard very much about how housing issues, we've heard of the connection between the mining companies which right through the Pilbara of course um, and Aboriginal communities and of course here at uh, Mutajulu uh, the uh, pending closure of the uh, Uluru climb is something that the community is very exercised about. It's been a remarkable trip. Patrick and Warren, Warren and Malandiri really wanted us to get a sense of the distance of the social justice issues facing people and the conditions that are just uh, unbelievable for, for people living in, in cities to get a comprehension of. And I think we've achieved that. From these communities on issues yeah. that we've been discussing nationally recently, particularly with the Gama Festival, things like constitutional recognition and yeah. a voice to parliament. What have you been hearing from the communities about those issues? Well, that was something that we discussed in every single community we went to along this very, very remarkable journey was the issue of constitutional recognition. Some communities weren't terribly aware of it, which is understandable. Um, and once communities heard about it, they said that they wanted to have a say in terms of how we go forward as a nation when it comes to constitutional recognition. Uh, there was also a very strong view from communities about the connection, as I said, between mining companies um, and the desperate conditions that, that many communities find themselves in. Talked about reconciliation, um, but very, very uh, focused on day-to-day -day issues, particularly, as I said, housing. Are people encouraged by the fact that Australia now has its first Indigenous Indigenous Affairs Minister in Ken Wyatt and also your, you being the Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australians? Are people um, encouraged to see that they are being led by Indigenous Australians? Well, Joanna, these are very remote communities that we've, we've been to, very small communities in many cases. Um, and people were just thrilled that there are actual uh, people like uh, like our group that actually visited the town. They hadn't had a lot of contact with uh, with uh, what was going on politically in Canberra. This is a long way from Canberra and this is why we came out here, to get a sense of uh, people's living conditions, but to get a sense of the strength and the pride in Aboriginality. Uh, for many communities that we went to, English was not the first language and uh, um, and we heard lots of uh, issues around pr preservation of culture, protection of culture, protection of language and the importance of dreaming stories and the stories that connected up those communities, the importance of uh, of, uh, of people's lives. Um, we met many people that were travelling to a very large funeral down at Mekathara, travelling thousands of kilometres because of the importance of culture and connection. You've called for uh, these people in these remote communities in particular to be involved in the policy formations that are related to them. How do you think uh, we could have that sort of combined approach uh, given that Ken Wyatt's in his role and you're in your role at the moment? Uh, the communities and the people that we met are very strong in their culture, uh, very strong in their place, and also very clear about what the issues are facing their communities. Uh, they know what the answers are, and there's no magic bullet um, for, for, for many of the issues. The importance of 
coming out, visiting, talking for people to have a say and have a voice is not um, is not missed by these communities. I can tell you that for sure. It was just a remarkable experience, and we feel very honoured that people actually had us in their communities um, and told us their stories and talked to us about what the what the issues are, what the needs are, and in many cases what the solutions are. You say that they have a desire to have a say in these issues. Do they feel like they're being listened to? I think one of the reasons that uh, we came particularly to the Pilbara and to parts of the gold fields is because um, in many ways this part of the world doesn't necessarily get a say in the national um, debate. So it was absolutely crucial that we actually came out and listened and talked to people and got a direct connection uh, with the people. They want to have a say and they deserve to have a say. And I think in the past they haven't had the say that they should have had. And that certainly will change. Linda Burney, thanks very much for joining us this morning. And you've got a stunning backdrop there in the Northern Territory. It is. It's just remarkable. And thank you to the Murujula community for having us here. All right. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. Just a beautiful backdrop.